Concorde, the world's first and only supersonic airliner, first took to the skies over 50 years ago. A joint venture between Aerospatiale of France and British Aerospace, the first British Concorde took off from Felton, in Bristol, in 1969, for its maiden flight. The very first British prototype, imaginatively named, 002, can be visited at the Fleet Air Arm Museum, in Yeovilton. 02, in fact, displayed the registration G-BSST and featured a modified nose and visor configuration. Preserved in perfect condition at the museum, BSST is displayed alongside other high-performance aircraft including, the Harrier Jumpjet, the Ferry Delta II and the Hawker Hunter. Now exhibited at the Imperial War Museum, in Duxford, the second British prototype, numbered 101, having completed fewer than 700 flying hours, still looks like a brand new aircraft. Exhibited alongside its predecessor, the Avro Vulcan Bomber, British engineering can be seen in all its glory, here at Duxford. Following the tragic crash of Air France Concorde, F-BTSE, in July 2000, the whole British fleet were grounded, later to be retired to various museums, around the world. I set myself the project to photograph each and every one, of the British Concords. 10, in total. A third prototype, G-BBDG, became the first aircraft to carry passengers at supersonic speeds. This airframe never actually entered commercial service, but was stored at Filton, and used for spare parts. It is now displayed outdoors at Brooklands, known as the birthplace of British aviation. When British Airways and Air France retired their fleets, the Brooklands Museum was offered BBDG as their star exhibit. The aircraft was dismantled as fully as possible and transported, in five major sections, by road, from Filton to the Brooklands Museum site. The first commercial Concorde to fly, G-BOAC, was retired in October 2003, to the viewing park at Manchester Airport, where it takes pride of place in a purpose-built hangar adjacent to the runway. Certainly, a spectacular sight for those jetting off to sunnier climbs. From 1976 until its retirement in 2003, Concorde's commercial home was Heathrow Airport, in London. With daily flights to destinations such as New York, Bahrain, and Barbados. Concorde G-BOAB, is stationed alongside the runway at Heathrow, although, disappointingly, BOAB is not open to the public, and difficult to photograph. These shots were taken from the perimeter road, and from a departing aircraft. Concorde's final flight, took place on the 26th of November 2003, with G-BOAF, returning back home to Filton, where it's now exhibited, in a purpose-built viewing hall, allowing the public to enter Concorde at the front from a mezzanine floor, and exit at the rear. This is a spectacular exhibit, with informative films being projected onto the fuselage of the aircraft, periodically during the day. G-BOAA, seen here displayed at the Museum of Flight, East Fortune, near Edinburgh is a unique exhibit, because, being the oldest of the fleet, it was never declared airworthy following the crash of 2000. Incredibly, BOAA was transported from Heathrow, to Scotland, in 2004, by dismantling the airframe, transporting the different sections by road and by sea, and reassembling once it had reached its destination. A painstaking process that took four years to complete, but those visiting the exhibit at East Fortune will agree. Well worth it. So, with the UK exhibits all photographed, the remaining concords to be visited are found at museums further afield. G-BOAD is on display at the Intrepid, Sea Air Space Museum New York. G-BOAG can be found at the Museum of Flight in Seattle, and G-BOAE in Barbados. Suddenly my wife seems more interested in the project.